any updates on testing in the main dining room menus? Yes, Megan. All the news is at royalcaribbeanblog.com. I posted it this morning. But the new menus will go live in the month of January. So I spoke with not only Royal Caribbean CEO Michael Bailey, but also with Lincoln D'Souza, who's the vice president of food and beverage. And uh, the new menus will begin in January. It's not going to be like snap your fingers January 1. They're all there. It'll be a process. But the goal is by early February for all the ships in the fleet to have the new menus on uh, operational. Um, the uh, If you want to see all the details, Megan, anybody else interested, it's on the homepage of royalcaribbeanblog.com. Yeah, a lot of news today. There was that uh, that thing, which is still a big deal, and also a change to the Diamond Plus benefits. I'm, uh, I would argue a minor change, but some other people might take umbrage with that. Well, I'm sure that'll come up in the discussion here. Do we have to pay gratuities on our drink vouchers? And the answer is uh, no. When you buy a drink, whether you pay individually for the drink or you uh, have a drink package, gratuity is part of that. Some people do elect to tip on top of that, but that's at your discretion. But don't feel like you're shorting anybody. Um, if you don't tip on top of that, should we buy our boys for six nine a beverage package? No, uh, you don't need to. Um, you'll have plenty of complimentary drinks on board. Um, I, I think a beverage package would be overkill for your kids. I mean, unless your kids uh, drink like you know five or six sodas a day, or more to the point, do you want your kids to drink five or six sodas a day? It is not worthwhile. You can purchase your boys drinks individually, meaning you'll just be charged for each drink rather than a drink package. I think not only is that more economical. I obviously they're not my kids. I'm not here to tell you how to how to how to parent. Um, but for my children, that's just too many drinks, and I don't uh, find that's prudent. So, uh, no, there you go. What Nassau excursions do you recommend for a seven year old who isn't into water parks? Ooh, Blue Lagoon um, is a great excursion through Royal Caribbean. Um, I would recommend that. So you can book it through Royal. Uh, there's a couple of different variations of Blue Lagoon. So Blue Lagoon in itself is a private island that that operates. You take a little ferry over there, and there's a lot of beaches. But you can also add on to that. There are animal encounters. I mean, I think maybe that might be a really fun thing for your seven-year-old, whether it's dolphins or sharks or sea lions. I forget exactly all the animals they have there. But it's some fun stuff. So that might be a really, really uh, good opportunity for you. What's the earliest time I can board the ship? It, this is a two-part question, two-part answer to your question. Number one, you have your check-in time. So before your cruise, 45 days before your cruise, you'll have the opportunity to get a check-in time. This is the time that Royal Caribbean wants you to come to the cruise terminal. Uh, typically, the earliest check-in times are somewhere in the 10 o'clock hour. Generally speaking, and again, this is a generalization, we're talking about 10.30 a.m. or so. Have I seen earlier? Yes, but uh, mostly 10.30 and around 11 o'clock, right? That's the check-in time, not your boarding time. Uh, but that's at least when they'll let you in the terminal, start processing you, get your own information, all that stuff. The actual boarding time depends on a lot of factors that no one knows in advance because, number one, they have to get every single passenger from the last sailing off the first sailing. Sounds like an easy task until you remember that people are people. And uh, there's a variety of reasons why this could take longer than you might imagine. Generally not a problem, but occasionally there's somebody who's got a billing issue or I don't know what. That can take a while. Also, the local authorities, the Coast Guard, needs to clear the ship. So there's a bit of a process there. But generally speaking, if everything goes to plan, boarding is usually begun somewhere uh, right around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. But again, it really depends. So I need to make that crystal, crystal clear there. Best things to do in Alaska with the kids. I would say, uh, th I, I love the parks. I think my kids absolutely love the parks, like uh, Mendenhall Glacier Park. Uh, the um, I don't know how old your kids are, Andrew, but also the um, uh, the dog sled excursion. We get to meet the dogs is really fun. They really like there's puppies involved. It's hard to go around with puppies. So some really, really good options uh, over there. What change did they make to Diamond Plus? So that is on realcreamblog.com as well. Um, for Diamond Plus only, you can no longer access the concierge lounge. Now, before you all freak out about this, let's be real. Let's, let's be practical. Let's think about this for a second. Number one, and and, and I'm not going to mince me. I'm not here to defend Royal Caribbean. Um, it, it is a reduction in benefits. There's no denying that. But the reality is the, it, um, this was only applied to ships that had a concierge lounge and not a suite lounge, of which there are about, I think, 11 or 12 that are left. Um, Royal Caribbean had been systematically removing them anyway with new ships and uh, refurbishments. So there was only about, it was really the vision, some vision, some radiance class ships and the quantum class ships that still had it. But uh, more to the point, even while this policy was still in place over the last year and a half, uh, because of overcrowding, they would limit the diamond members anyway. So practically speaking, it wasn't probably a benefit you would have had an easy opportunity to take advantage of. But it's still a reduction in benefits. I'm not here to tell you that that's you know right or wrong. Obviously, I don't think anybody here thinks, oh, good, less benefits, that's good. 
But in the grand scheme of benefits, this was not a what I would consider a third rail benefit. This is not a benefit that I would say, wow, this is a big deal. This is not a core competency of benefits. I'm sure that people think that I'm crazy and, and you're all yelling at me, which is fine. Um, but I just I, I think in the grand scheme of things, trying to keep it perspective, there are bigger problems probably to be upset about with Royal Caribbean than this one. But um, it is still a cut. And on principle, I understand that frustration. I, as a Diamond Plus member myself, um, I think I took advantage of this particular benefit like once or twice. But hey, it was nice to be able to uh, have that. Hi, Matt. Is the Crown Anchor Lounge the same thing as the Concierge Lounge? Uh, no. No. Concierge, it's, it, this is very confusing. So let's go back 20 years ago. Uh, back then, there was a Diamond Lounge, which is the Crown and Anchor Lounge. So it's a Diamond Lounge for Diamond members. And the Concierge Lounge is what we now call a Suite Lounge. It's very confusing. Um, but now, on some most ships, there is the Concierge Lounge has been replaced by a Suite Lounge. So the Concierge Lounge is another name for Suite Lounge. Um, and, and that's the difference as it relates to the change today. But they're not the Diamond Lounge has not changed at all. They're two different venues together. It can get very confusing when you're talking about Suite Lounge or concierge lounge but you know, when your cruise goes to cozumel or costa maya do you need to switch u.s currency to their currency nope everybody takes u.s dollars there the only reason you'd want to is for a better exchange rate but it really doesn't matter fernando i would not do that i wouldn't waste your time u.s dollars totally acceptable everywhere there what activities are free on quantum class ships interested in bumper cars i fly and north star are these free uh yes there's opportunities to do all those things for free there are also paid opportunities as well so uh for i fly and north star bumper cars are free um, there's a number of activities that are included with your cruise. Honestly, um, a lot of the activities in the Cplex are included, whether it is volleyball or soccer or badminton or um, dodgeball, things like that. Um, but the um, but the pools are obviously included as well. Um, a really good idea might be to look at a past cruise compass from the ship you happen to be going on, and then you can see it'll show you a little dollar icon or not if it's included or not. So yeah, do you recommend carrying your passport into port? Yes, I carry my passport every time I go to port, except for Labadee and Coco Key. I think you're, there's no point. You're not getting left behind over there. But when I go to Cozumel, Costa Maya, Freeport, Nassau, always. And the reason is, uh, it, same reason, they, something they ingrained in me in the Boy Scouts, always be prepared. Um, personal responsibility, have it just in case. Uh, so what if you lose it? What if I lose my cash? What if I lose my phone? What if I lose my kids? I mean, I, I, you can't think that way. You got to be, you got to be responsible, and you have to take certain precautions. And I do, um, but I, to me, it is just it's the responsible thing to do right there. So, do you recommend getting the unlimited dining package? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm not. I will not sit here and tell you everybody. You all should get the dining package. I don't think that's. I don't think that's that's prudent or correct. Um, I think that especially dining in general um, augments the complimentary dining. It doesn't replace it per se. Now, my wife, as an example, Lee, she hates the main dining room. She's just, that's just her. She's a picky eater. She would be the first person to tell you that's the case. So she prefers the cuisines you find in the, in the specialty restaurants, right? Me, I like the, the specialty restaurant. I'm sorry. I do like specialty restaurants. I like the main dining room, but I also like changing up a little bit, having, you know, sushi here one night, playmakers another day, right? So there's value there. If you've never cruised before, Lee, let's say, I don't know if you've cruised before. If you've never cruised before, I would not get the unlimited dining package. What I would do is plan on doing dinner in the dining room and then either book a restaurant or two on your own or maybe get the three-night dining package and kind of augment. You have a good mix of both. What should I carry with me on shore excursions? All right, good question. Your CPAS card, you're going to need that, number one. I carry my passport. I think it's worthwhile for that from a personal um, responsibility standpoint. Cash, that's important. I would not bring like every dollar you got. Like I don't bring my whole wallet. I bring a credit card. And I bring, depends on the tour, obviously, right? But, you know, $100, $200, something like that. Um, And small change would be a really good idea. So that way you, um, you know, you could pay for, you know, here's a tip. Oh, I want to buy a soda for my kids. Like $100 bill is not great because a lot of people can't break $100 bills in these places. So I have a little bit of cash. Uh, Sunscreen would be very important. Uh, If you're doing a water activity like the beach, uh, you want to break a towel. You also can bring uh, sunscreen, sunglasses, hat, things like that. That's probably the basics. And a bottle of water. Really good idea. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. Really appreciate you. Uh, Next week, we will be live from Wonder of the Seas. Now, as you all know, I really hate live broadcasts from the cruise ships because the internet just never is as good as it is at home. But I will make sure we make it happen. It will be a perfect day, Coco Key. Um, I'm not sure yet if it will be at our same time. 
earlier in the day. I'll have to work on that. But uh, suffice to say, we will have a live broadcast. So make sure your notifications are on. I know that Danny DiMatteo has them on and Sharon Stockman has them on. But make sure your notifications are on. And not only the subscribe button, but that little bell icon. So that way YouTube lets you know when we're live. Anyway, have a great week, everybody. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. That's always important as well. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.